Guillotine Geeks live reactions. Chikadze versus Cater. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Were we on to something? Maybe. Maybe we were on to something. On the brink. On the brink. Uh, if you watch the uh if you watch the geeks video, you know, the geeks vision predictions, you would have got to see the sneak peek, the insights on what everyone thought in particular. The two guys we got on tonight in particular <laughs> that are running through this reactions is uh is two guys that were on the cater side. We were riding the cartel tonight. Yes, we were. No so second thoughts. So what were your initial thoughts? You see, let's run right into it, though. Let's go start the main event. This was a banger. Let's go. What do you think? Ooh, main event. So, honestly, I was thinking about the fight all day. It started to mold. I didn't expect the dominance from Cater, but I did expect to win, honestly. Like, I just um, knew that uh, Giga hadn't really been tested in the grappling department as much as everyone had thought. And that was a test that he definitely failed tonight. He stopped a few takedowns late, but Cater, um, Cater's ground game in that first round, I feel like, kind of set the tone, and he just took it from there. Um, the but all in all, electric fight, early contender for fight of the year. I mean, it's a beat down. It was a beat down. It was ah, 50 44. That's not a fight of the year. That's but not a fight of the year. Listen, that's a great I like, performance by Cater. I think that Giga showed way more heart than people thought. And you know, you're just shitting on his takedown defense. Listen, Cater had a hard time taking him down. He slipped that first time. And that, you know, yeah, I guess he slipped and then Calvin did end up like getting the takedown, but it was, you know, poor position because of the slip, obviously. And you know what? You're right, bro. It deflated him, bro. It deflated him, bro. As soon as he got up, it was like, I'm not sure if Calvin had hit him with a, it looked like there was like a, a short combination. As soon as he got up, it might've been an uppercut, but Giga yeah. was wobbling, wobbling all around the octagon. And then it seemed at first it was like, okay, maybe it was a shot. And then it was like, okay, he's not done wobbling. It, like he kept wobbling all around the octagon. So it was like, what's going on? It's like, oh my gosh, I forgot. He's never been in a five-round fight. No, I didn't forget that because I was on the cater side, but that's what a lot of people thought. Uh, but, yeah, Dude, man. I will say Giga's chin had not been tested. It got certified tonight. Like, the fact that he was able to withstand that and go to a decision because he took a lot of damage. Spinning back elbows multiple in one round, like, everything cater hit him with, with had a thud. Um, so respect to Giga, man. He definitely, uh, has a chin. Yeah, no, I took a slight, I took a slight L. I, uh, I got too greedy. I jumped on the live line. I tried to hit a Calvin finish. And because, mm -hmm. you know, as soon as that third round started, I was looking at it and I was like, you know what, man, no shot, you know, no shot. And you know, what surprised me a lot was Calvin. If it, it seemed like when he went on those little bursts, he was really getting them. But he, he like he seemed to be conserving his energy. I don't know. I think he still had a little bit left in the tank. Like at the end, you could see it when he like mm -hmm. left that last burst. It was like I feel like he little had a little bit left. But he he's just a smart fighter. I mean, when you're up that much, what what are you gonna do? You know what I'm saying? Like, but who thought it would be like that? Yeah, and dude, I mean, you gotta save a little bit because once your tank hits E, you are out, and you got to make sure you got it for the whole fight. I think. He he played it right, used what gas he did have left at the end, almost got the finish, which was crazy. He got a knockdown and started the ground and pound. But, again, phenomenal performance from Cater. Yeah, I mean, one last thing is, I mean, whatever happened with Giga, I don't know if his leg got hurt, but he definitely went away from leg kicks in this fight, and it was extremely, extremely crazy to, like, to see because you, you know that he bases his entire game off kicking, and for him to just abandon it, raises red flags so interesting to see what happens with that i know dana white's talking right now we'll find out later but let's move on to the next fight that intrigued us the most and i would say that that was brandon roy val and bontorine mm -hmm. 
what are your thoughts? So, man, it was a firefight. It felt like they were scrapping on the feet and absolutely scrambling when that hit the mat. Like Roy Val, the gas tank on that guy, because he wasn't even close to done, I felt like. There were points where he kind of took a break, got a little breather on bottom. But for the most part, he was working. On the feet, he was pushing the pace. On the ground, he was just chained to mission game. Um, it was close. You know, Bontorin, noticeably stronger. I think that was the uh, main attribute he had over him. But split decision win for Roy Val. That seems right for how that fight went. He, uh, But going forward, if he's going to be a contender, I feel like he definitely needs to put some strength on because he is noticeably weak in there. I understand. I, I agree. I feel like I feel like that's a valid take. But you, I feel like people do underestimate. You know, Bontorin. He makes a big cut and he comes down to get that strength. You know what I'm saying? So like, you know, hands off, hats off to him for doing that. But uh, I think that he's just so lethal, man. Like off his back. I mean, this guy has so much energy. Like, look, can you talk about the stamina on this guy? Like, this guy literally just is a hundred submission attempts like over 200 strikes easily like this guy is just volume machine like this guy's entertainment and oh yeah oh yeah and that's what we love man he's sponsored by dr dabber he came out for the boys <laughs> but you know he had that very very uh debatable tap he had him in the arm bar for the second i think that i think that he tapped but as soon as he slipped out of it he rear, you know, mm -hmm. especially I mean, wasn't in it anymore. But yeah, third round arm bar, that arm's gonna be sweaty. It's gonna be hard to get a hold from how he was. But we got about as close as you can get to that submission, man. And that would have been sweet. That would have been good to have tonight. That would have been sweet for the geek sheet. That would have been good for the under, and it would have been good for the prop. But it's all mm -hmm. right. You know, we lived to see another day. First, first week back, tough. We went fifty for. 50% on the sheet, so not the best. I already lost my voice from screaming at the damn television. But all right, let's go. Let's go to another fight that entertained me like shit. Let's go to the the legend. I don't know if that's like too far. I, I call him a legend. The the old grinder. Here we go. The crusher, Court McGee. Let's go. Puts on a clinic for the young man. Uh shows him what's up, man. The kid comes out. Always got his first round subs, huge talent, a lot of talk. Bullies, bicks are all over him. Not today, boss. Court McGee shows him what's going on, veteran style, grinds him against the fence, takes him down, relentless pressure, executed to perfection, embarrasses, embarrasses him, honestly, in his own game, veteran style. What do you got? Ooh, so, um, you know, you said it, man. He, Court McGee walked in that octagon, and he has old man strength and a gas tank to match. And he's durable, and he just kept coming forward. He was taking him down at will. The stand-up game was going well. He got a knockdown. Um, that was the best I've ever seen Court McGee look. And, you know, it's crazy to think at 37 he's improving, but that's what it looks like to me. You know, Dude, all around great performance, man. He looked so strong. I, I, I was watching it, you know, I was with all the geeks, you know, my fellow geeks watching the fights. And everybody around is just like, holy shit, man. Do you see this guy's back? Like, this guy's yoked as fuck. And I'm just like, dude, that is – and add the old man strength to that shit. Dude, this man is an ogre. Like, do not get it let this guy get a grip on you because he will fucking never let go of you ever uh yeah all right let's move on to another one we had a huge banger it was a fucking back and forth brawl could have went either way in my eyes joseph holmes jamie pickett we were on the wrong end of this one it was a ruthless fight it looked like our boy joseph holmes kind of just fell off a cliff in the first he kind of just got overdosed. Um, what do you got on that one? It was kind of just a barn barn buster, huh? Dude, 
I will say the UFC dropped him a very good promo before that fight. And I was getting hyped up and he came out in the first round and looked really good. But you could see that this was on short notice for him. Uh, he mentioned he was a little bit heavier going into this weight cut, probably due to just having um, Thanksgiving and Christmas and all that, you know, the holidays. But I thought he looked good early. The gas tank will be an issue in my eyes going forward. Um, but, yeah, Kenny Pickett, I mean, he impressed me. He showed a solid all-around game. That strength is uh, is a game changer, I feel like, for him. And uh, in a fight he needed to win, he had a good performance. So hats off to him. Yeah, we'll save that for that. Let's go to the next one. Um, this one pissed me off. This one pissed me off, bro. Mm, I don't know if it pissed me off, but it pissed me off. It, it pissed me off. Yeah, it pissed me off. Brian Keller, can you grab the gi for the boys? Please, brother. Come on, man. I, I, guess, I guess I'm asking too much. Maybe no arm in. Once, just one time, please entertain me and don't go arm in. I mean, the conservative play can only go so many times un unanswered, my brother. Uh, I mean, that's that's that same uh, that's that same attitude he brings to selling cards online on his Instagram account, man, because he gets like five guys in there on the live stream. That's some. That's some real like hard energy to stay in there and fucking sell those cards, man. Like, damn it, dude. If he grabs a sub, <laughs> we're making way more money tonight, to say the least. What do you got on this, Goose? Dude, it honestly, I wasn't expecting the height difference to be that drastic. It seemed like color was much smaller. Drastic. And Kroom. The only I feel like the only reason he lost this fight was because it was on short notice. Um, noticeably gassed, but he was having success early, you know, keeping him at range with his punches and kicks. Um, but Kelleher, you know, he found success in the grappling game. Turned into his bread and butter. He just kept going to it. We had the second round submission, specifically by by the guillotine. He had it about 15 times. He just kept chaining back through the same couple submissions, getting on top, going for the rear naked, spinning around. I mean, impressive performance, especially I didn't know his ground game was that good. But um, it's going to be interesting to follow him going forward. 100%. You know, I can't wait to get to this next fight. And I just looked down at it. And I just... I just started having a fucking fiesta with my dome piece, man. Dude, Jake Collier versus Chase Sherman. I'm so sorry to bring this fight up, Goosey, but it is real. This really happened. This is real life. We were hysterically laughing watching this shit. Dude, we got these big old drooling dogs, man, just walking their asses into the octagon to just beat each other's dome pieces in and we get a submission by Jake Collier. What are your initial reactions? Dude, my my initial reaction is apologies for putting my associating my name with Chase Sherman because <laughs> <laughs> that that was a pretty bad performance. In a fight where going into it, he says it's a contract fight. He wins, he stays in the UFC, he loses completely di different direction. He quit, man. He rolled over, put his hands away, didn't try to defend the neck, choked and tapped instantly. Like, Jake Collier impressed me a bit, but yeah, a pretty fun fight to watch for as short as it was. Yeah, absolutely hilarious. You know, he actually looks pretty decent. He looked like he cut some weight. So we'll leave it at that. We're going to cut it down. We got one more fight to talk about. We got three more minutes on the clock. We got Slava Claus. The Slava Claus. The Slava Claus came to town and he delivered. He dropped yes. off a big bag, baby. He dropped off a liver shot from fucking hell. From fucking 
Russia. Let's go, baby. Team Alpha Male. Mason Jones is next. He's getting a fucking highlight reel just like that. So shout out to the kid. Made me some money. That guy's <laughs> up next. Takedown defense on point. What do you got? Dude, he could get a little bit of a hype train going here, and I would be on board because that was that was an electric performance tonight. You know, he came out, brawled a little bit more than I would have expected. You know, he got hit with some shots, but he gave his shots back and let Slava dance, man. That was fun. Dude, let Slava dance. Let Slava dance. Let the geeks dance. We went 50% tonight on the sheet. We, uh, <laughs> you know, we're coming back next week. We're coming in hot. So what counts is that we're going to be out here every single week. We got the fucking inside details on what you got to know. We're going to be dropping videos every week. So tune in. Hope you guys like the reactions. Coming back at you with the picks and the predictions. We got an interview on Monday with Nico. Stay tuned. Goose Monday. Goose. Monday. Interview with Nico. Um, prediction video next Wednesday in uh, UFC 270. Let's go. Gone versus Naganu. Holy shit. Let's fucking go. All right, we're out.